another. You know, in watching football many times, people who are not even into football, they listen to commentators, analysts, pundits, and fans, and they, who come up with all sorts of things when they're analyzing the game. They're analyzing the game, and they're talking about the formation of a team, and they talk about 4-4-2, 4-2-3-1, 4-5-1, 3-5-2. And to many people, it's a lot of gibberish. I'll tell you what, if you're not a football person, and you hear those numbers, those numbers don't matter to you. What matters to you the most is how many goals were scored. But then again, there's a lot more to the seeming Greek that those words and those numbers are 424, 433 four, three, and all that. And I'm talking about 442 four, today. A lot of people are wondering, people talk about 442 four, as a formation in football and they're wondering what really does it mean? I'm just a football person, I'm not a football fanatic, I just want to enjoy the game, watch goals scored and that's it. So, where does this whole 442 come in? Little do you know, though, that majority of these things, these numbers, actually resonate with your daily life. 442, in particular. And I'm talking about 442 in the context of your daily endeavor, things that you do on a daily basis, at work, and in your relationship. How does 442 come to relate with what you do in life and that's where I am today. I want to share that with you. Now in sharing 442 with you, I've got to explain to you what 442 is in football and no matter what your background is, I would like you to sit and listen. 442, there's 10 football players on the pitch. Okay, there's 11, there's a goalkeeper. But we're talking about the goalkeeper being what we know he is, he's number one, one, then 442. Four, represents this line here, a line of defense of four people. One, two, three, four. Four defenders. Four defenders. Then, in the next line is four, two, three, four. We call them four midfielders because as you can see, they're in the middle of the field. And then, two, the two attackers. Four, four, two. Simple. Now what is the benefit and the intrigue and the uniqueness of the four four two system? A lot of people play it. We call it the grandpa's old system because it is one of the oldest there. There's four defenders. These four guys prevent try very hard to prevent the opposition to attack the goal and score against them. So their protection for the goalkeeper. Goalkeeper is human, so let's give him an X as well. There's the goalkeeper. And that's the four people protecting the goalkeeper. The next four have their own roles. These two here are here to protect the four so that when the ball's coming, it stops here. They try very hard for the ball not to get to these four. That's what they're there for. These two provide width, provide options, provide an angle for people to go into. They put, they, and in, in football terms, we say they make the pitch bigger because they're wide players. They go all the way wide like that and they can run into space and keep the opposition back from coming down to you. So, the four have their roles, and the two are the point men. These are the scorers of goals. These are the guys who do the scoring. And they rely usually on these two to swing the crosses in from here, and boom, they score. That's scoring your goals. So, remember, four-man defense, four-man midfield, two of them on either side, right and left, provide width, two protecting here, but one of them as well, initiating the run that goes forward that starts an attack and springs, switches passes to these people and make the pitch bigger. Getting complicated? Please don't be confused. And these two, of course, are the target men. Boom! Go. How does it relate with you? Simple. 442 relates with you in a very simple way. You 
are going in for a job interview, you're going in for a project presentation or defense of a proposal or something, remember, you need fourfold two. You need your line of defense. That line of defense is when you're taking in the questions from people. They're asking you questions. Your interviewer is asking you questions and you're answering them. Then, two, here you're thinking out the box. You probably might need to depend on something that you didn't pick up in school, in the classroom, from your textbooks, in order to answer their questions. That is the protection of your defense. That is you thinking out the box and thinking of something unique and different that you can give to these people so that they can respect what you're saying. And this is making the pitch big. Open things up. Open the conversation and give them a lot to think about. Let them also work while they're working you. Give them a lot of options as what you can offer, what you're about, and that's why you've got the wide name. And this, these two, and the crosses, boom, that's your punchline. And you need one or two to get your wins. Trust me and believe me, it works. Your line of defense making your pitch big, that is broadening your horizon and showing it to them that there's more to you than what you read in the textbooks. These are the two. And you've got your point, man. And you, now it now depends on you. And you've got to determine what time you actually do the hit. What time do you sit back and entertain their questions? What time do you actually need to think out the box and find something else outside of classroom, outside of textbooks. And what time do you have to actually broaden your horizon, broaden theirs as well, give them something extra to think about, and that's what you're doing. And what time do you hit your line or two that makes them wonder why they shouldn't engage you, that would make them wonder why they shouldn't actually take you on. That's when you hit them with that one. A killer blow. This is the task for you. Write down before you go for any other interview, any other meeting or project defense or whatever, write down 10 things, 10 factors or 10 points that you need to actually take heed of when you're going in for your wins, for your interview. Four of them make them defensive at the time the questions when are you going to entertain the questions what are you going to say to them find out two things at least that you can think of out the box that can make you unique and special and peculiar in the particular situation that you find yourself that you don't find in your textbook but that you've learned from life experience or from people or mentors that's that then broaden your horizon Go beyond the subject that you're actually there for. Let them know that your knowledge is wider and is broader. Those are these. And then kill a punch. Why you think they'll be making a mistake if they don't take you. If you need any tips as to how to put together these 10, I'm here. And I'm here for you at all times. Your comments will be welcome. Your feedback will be welcome. I tell you what, subscribe to me and call Tunde Talks on the YouTube channel. You'll see more. But also you can contact me directly with your comments. Put your email address there and I'll be in touch with you. And I will give you those 10 tips that you can actually use to go forward. When I come back again another time, I promise you, you will see another formation. Not every team that uses 442 wins, and not every winning team uses 442. So there are other formations, and they can resonate with you as well. Trust me. Thank you very much.